Hello, welcome to this next uh, Substance Designer tutorial. Um, a few tutorials ago, substance wise or designer wise, I did a ring mail and I've been working on uh, now a little uh, method for getting a chain mail um, because, well, you'd rather have chain mail, wouldn't you? Uh, so let's have a look. So that we'll start off with a new graph. So it's a new substance graph. I'm going to call it uh, chain mail. Um, everything else I'm going to leave the same. Uh, we've got some channels down here, our outputs, and we probably use all of these, maybe not ambient occlusion. I'm undecided yet. Uh, so let's click OK on that one and we'll get our outputs. So you know the characteristic of uh, chain mail is that it's lots of rings looped together so we need to make a ring to start with and we'll start that off with a shape node so press space and type in shape and then having clicked on the shape node change it to a disk now I'm going to make it a tiny bit smaller just a little bit um, and now we need to create the hole. Um, so for that we're going to use a blend um, and we're going to blend two shapes together, uh, two circles but one bigger than the other. So let's duplicate this with a control and D and then I'm going to reduce the scale up here. Oops, let's have a look and now we can blend them together. Uh, so space and select blend We'll have the big one in the uh, input there, or the middle one, and the big uh, little one in the top. And then we just need to change the blending mode to subtract. And there we get our ring. So, you know, that's a good start. Uh, but what we actually want is multiple rings. And one ring on its own is not going to do that. So what we want is to copy uh, this initial ring and then offset it into four kind of quarters so we do that with a transform 2d node just going to put that up there a little bit there we go and on the transforms we use offset and we're going to offset by 0 0.5 in x and y and now of course you know we have our offset rings but we just need to blend it back to this one so that you know it all comes together so let's just type in blend and then I'll pop those in there together and we'll switch this over to a multiply whoops do, did I mean multiply I'm not sure I did mean multiply uh, well let's do da, 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 max line there we go that's what I wanted don't know why I thought multiply I've done this so many times on my own <laughs> to try and uh, get the thing together. You'd think I'd know the blend nodes by now, wouldn't you? Okay, so that's all very well, um, except it doesn't really uh, do what we want it to. Uh, I'm just going to create a, a tile node here, a tile generator, and I'll pop that into the pattern input and switch the input or switch the pattern to image input. And that's what we get now you'll notice in this you often get a little line uh, at the edge of the squares uh, or the edge of each tile uh, that's a little bit annoying in this case uh, but uh, I found that it's the image input filtering and if I uh, change that from bilinear plus mipmap to bilinear that little um, you know, little edge goes away uh, let's pop that up there there we go now we can see it and if I zoom in uh, we should see what's going on now the problem is these links aren't really linking they've just made a pattern um, so what we need to do is do something to offset one edge of the um, of, of the ring and we'll have to do that by putting a, a gradient over uh, our ring and we'll do that in the next bit uh, and you'll see you know, the effect it has so uh, we'll do that in the next section and I'll talk to you then
Okay, so what we want to do is put a gradient over this, which is going to push one side backwards, if you like. Um, in this case, we're just going to make it darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So let's just move these out of the way a little bit. And I need to add in a gradient. So in this case, we'll have gradient linear one. So we've got white at the top, black at the bottom, and then we we'll use a blend and we'll blend these together. So there we go. And if I change the um, mix mode on this, or to blend mode to multiply, dark at the bottom, light at the top. Okay, so we also need um, to have that affect these uh, linking loops here. So let me just pop that in there before I forget. And then we'll pop that into the transform. So, on our uh, blended node here, uh, it's still not quite right. You'll see we've got some of the loops that are over the others, uh, and that's because these, uh, or this 2D transform, is kind of the wrong way for what I want. What I want is for the, the light bits to be together and the darker bits to be together. So the lighter bit on the top is at the bottom, and the lighter bit on the, on the ring is... Uh, on the top. So I want to rotate this round 180 degrees to get that where I want it. And now that's uh, now that's correct. And now our loop is going up, it's going under here, over there, under here, and that's perfect. So that's our uh, basic pattern. Uh, what we'll do in the next couple of uh, sections is just to translate this into some other maps, like a metallic map and uh, an opacity map, I believe. I think, yeah, I'm going to use an opacity map um, to you know, give us the effects we want. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so our height map first, and this is a fairly straightforward bit. We're just going to plug this into the height and you'll see that it's kind of a bit jagged to start with because we don't have enough geometry in this uh, model to do it so all we need to do is edit the material so it's materials default edit and then we'll scroll down until we get to the height section and we'll increase our tessellation there we go. Now it's a little bit jagged around the edges because this is quite a harsh line, um, but it is at least displacing in a you know sensible and uh, consistent way. So that's starting to look good. Let's get rid of this uniform colour because it's just in the way at the moment. And what else shall we do uh, in this bit? Right, the other kind of important thing here is this normal intensity. Now I've displaced these uh, pieces quite a long way um, you know, to the max value of uh, 1 and uh, the normal map here is not doing that. It's only really calculating it at a very kind of surface level. So if I increase the intensity of this it will get a better look. Um, actually we're not going to see it now <laughs> because it's um, it's much more visible later so uh, I will revisit this particular point uh, when I've got the metal maps uh, on here okay so we'll do the metal map next uh, so I'll talk to you then okay so let's have a look at the metal map if I simply plug this in to our uh, metallic map down here uh, it's not going to be very good because some of our links are white or some uh, parts of our links are white and some of them are deeper grey so we're going to get some that's quite metallic and some that's not very metallic and we want to you know, have them all to be the same kind of level so I'm just going to move that back there and then press space and I'm going to type curve. I'll drag and drop that into that input there 
And then in the curve, I have these these out oh, of this graph. If I double click into that, it will add a point which I'll delete. And then I can grab the top point and move it around. And this is essentially defining the level of white. So anything that is particularly, um, how can I put it? Anything that's anywhere near white, you know, even if it's a gray, I want to be white. So I'm moving this over to uh, the left until I get to just about black. Uh, perhaps not quite as far as black. So now I've kind of turned that from a grey scale uh, image to a black and white image. And if I plug that in there, uh, I'll find that I've got it kind of the wrong way around, <laughs> which is fine. So what I actually want to do now is just invert this. So my background is currently shiny and metallic and the foreground is uh, the loops are matte. So I'll just select that uh, noodle there and press space and type invert. And that will flip it around in the right direction. And now, you know, my links are, whoops, let's pull this back. My links are shiny and my background is uh, matte, uh, which is exactly as it should be. Now, if I go to this normal map now, and reduce it to uh, the intensity it was which well if I reduce it to zero intensity uh, you'll see that it looks really rough uh, it, it's lost a lot of its sort of shape and definition and that's because the underlying geometry normals are matching up with the displacement uh, the displacement is pushing it into a shape um, but the underlying geometry is still just a box so increasing the normal intensity here uh, will give you that shape back. And the further you displace, the higher the value you need to go. Uh, I'm going to go up to three at this point in time because that seems to give quite a nice uh, result. Okay, so that's the metal map and my re-explanation of the, uh, the normal map and the normal strength. Um, in the next one we'll start to look at uh, roughness um, and then we'll go on to uh, opacity and then I think we might go back and adjust our Jmail to be a little less kind of uh, angular. Uh, so I shall talk to you then. Okay then, so our, um, oh no, <laughs> Put that in the roughness map. What a foolish man. That should be in the metallic map. There we go, that's more like it. Sorry about that. Bit of, bit of a mess up on my part. I almost swore there. That awful of me. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of that as well. There we go. So my metallic map um, is quite suitable for my roughness map, really. Um, except I don't want it to be white and black. I want it to be uh, another way. Uh, I want the black to be kind of uh, you know an off grey rather than a uh, completely you know black. So we can change this to a or add a curves node in rather not change it and pop that in there and then on our map. I want to take the the black and turn it grey. Now, if I grab this black node, or oh, black point here, and start to push it up, we'll start to get a more greyish um, baseline um, because the darkest level in this image is going to be at this point here, and I'm setting it to this kind of uh, grey. So if I pop that into the roughness map, now we get a, you know, still metallic, but not quite as shiny uh, version. And we can should be able to see this kind of live. If I drag that right down to the bottom, it's very shiny. If I take it up ever so slightly, it's going to start to get uh, a little bit matted. And I imagine that, you know, unless you were you know, a king or a, a chief or a summit or other, 
you probably weren't walking around with super polished shiny uh, chamber okay so that's that what else do we need to do well we need a uh, opacity map and we need some color I guess um, color wise not entirely sure I'll have a think about that uh, but opacity map yeah we can do that straight away so uh, we'll have a look at that next So one of the maps that doesn't come in um, yeah, in this template uh, is the opacity map. So we just need to add that in. So I'm going to press space and type in, whoops, not input, <laughs> completely the opposite. Uh, type in output. And then on this output node, uh, we're going to add an item and switch it over to the opacity channel, the opacity usage. Uh, and now we can plug in one of our maps to do that. So on our completely black and white one here, if I drag and drop that into the opacity and then right click, drag that onto the 3D preview and let go. And whoops. <laughs> and I need to set this to the opacity view. Uh, and now I can see that I've got that completely the wrong way around. So it's simply a question of selecting that noodle, typing in invert, and popping that on there. And now our uh, mesh is nicely transparent where we want it to be, which is perfect. I'm going to change this uh, to perhaps a rounded cylinder. I think it's a slightly better visualization of this. There we go. OK, so we're sort of approaching a point where we need to do something uh, need to do you know uh, a little bit of shaping I think and we're just going to go back in the um, back in the process or back in the the graph uh, to here and add a little curvature to our ring uh, so I'll do that in the next section okay so um, back here when we defined our initial shape um, I was a little bit uh, careless about you know whether I wanted it to be a smooth ring or an actually kind of a washer harsh shape um, so let's just move these back a little bit so all I need to do for this is to pop a, uh, a bevel in here so with this noodle selected I'm going to type uh, space and then bevel and we'll add that bevel in and you'll see it kind of blows us out completely because its settings are a little bit extreme for what we want uh, so we're going to take the distance right down and you'll see that's the result of it initially and that's a bit too much of oh, going into negative territory that's why there we go going to eke that down ever so slightly just to give it a little bit of something there we go so now we've got a little bit of a smoother uh, piece uh, we can actually increase the smoothing to give it a, a little bit more uh, perhaps the distance is a little too low currently but as we can see that yeah as we're adjusting this you know we're kind of ruining the whole thing really uh, I mean it's quite a nice pattern but it's not the pattern I want um, so the idea now is to perhaps change the shape here perhaps I'm too big uh, so if I take this scale down a little and then take my bevel distance down a teeny tiny bit I'm going to come to kind of you know the right kind of spot there we go somewhere around there I think whoops yes that's looking uh, much much better 
there is kind of some intersection if you get real close um, but you know I don't think I'm ever going to get away from that <laughs> and you know if you've adjusted this shape you may want to adjust the inner ring so I could make that thicker or thinner you know depending upon you know the kind of look you want uh, I've got a few kind of gaps in there now and that you know adds a little bit to it but you may prefer there to be no gaps so you know adjust as required okay so this bevel you know has just fitted in and it's all flowing through and all these maps have recalculated we should see much more curve on our uh, normal map there uh, similarly a bit more curve on our height map there okay so uh, that's about that really I think I might uh, have a look to do some colouring next uh, sum up with this colour area uh, to you know finish this off so I will talk to you then okay so what I want to do is just vary the uh, the colour across the rings a little bit and I'm gonna cheat a little bit by using um, an ambient occlusion uh, map uh, node so if I press space and type in ambient I want the HBAO one and I want our height map to come into this so this is our ambient occlusion map uh, which very nicely kind of gives us some dark areas and some light areas depending upon you know where the um, you know where the link the, the links are joining um, and we can change our values here to whatever we want whatever's nice we can increase or reduce our uh, radiuses obviously reducing it down to zero uh, seems a bit much but uh, there we go I'd, I'd want my, I had some peaks in it earlier which I didn't really want I wanted it to be a little bit more uh, like this and if I simply plug that into our colour output we'll see what we get and there we go we get a little bit of uh, shadow behind and we get a little bit of uh, highlight on the uh, the rings that are you know looped above uh, but it's not very uh, you know metally so let's give it some color so if I select that noodle and we want a gradient map now we can map our colors uh, onto here so in the gradient editor click on the map can start to add colors uh, the black I don't want to be completely black I want it to be a little bit kind of off grey and they are white I really don't want that to be white uh, so we'll take that down to a grey as well you can of course you know put some intermediates in there um, to you know give it more variation um, but I just wanted to you know use the fact that I know which loops are next to each other which loops are over and which loops are under to you know add to the colouring uh, let's take this one out I think let's just drag that off up above there we go okay so that's a little bit better yes um, that is essentially as probably as far as I'll go here um, so in the, the final bit what we'll do is just publish it to uh, an SPSAR so that it could be used in Substance Paint or uh, other substance products um, and that will be that yes sorry <laughs> okay so I shall talk to you in the next section okay so to use this in a uh, say painter uh, the first thing you need to do is save the package and you know, I've saved this already but I'll save it again uh, obviously you do save as to a directory um, and then we need to publish the graph so it's right click whoops no right click on the package 
and publish SBSAR file and um, select your path and your name uh, your compression and generate missing icon and that will go away and uh, generate a sensible icon ish there we go now <laughs> I did say ish uh, and then publish I've published it already so it's complaining and then I'll click yes okay so once you've done that we can use it elsewhere and uh, just do a quick demo uh, so I've got this dress I did in a previous um, tutorial and we're just going to oops there's a little glitch there uh, oh, a lot of a glitch uh, we're just going to change these panels out so that uh, we've got chain mail so uh, I believe they're in this back fill layer here it's Oh my goodness, it's really glitching today. I might just have to move it a lot. There we go. Uh, so if I turn that off. There we go. Now it's behaving itself. If I turn it off and on, uh, I'll get my result. Okay, so. First of all, we need to get our chainmail in. So I'm going to drag and drop my... Uh, chainmail SBSAR file onto my library it's going to come in as a base material and uh, you can put it to your assets if you're uh, confident with it and click import and that then will add it to our uh, library here now I can drag and drop it onto that folder or underneath that folder and you'll see it just kind of overwrites everything there um, it's not the ideal UVs for this, but you know, we'll uh, we'll persist. Okay, so for this chain mail, uh, my loops are a bit big, so let's set that up to maybe uh, four scale. That's a bit better. And essentially, now we have kind of replaced the whole thing with chain mail, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, but if you wanted to preserve your um, you know textures from underneath we can add a black mask so the first thing I want to do is kind of have something for the black mask to refer to and that's going to be an anchor point so I'm going to add an anchor point to our chain mail which will uh, expose all of the channels images um, to the you know to be, for me to be able to use in my mask so we'll add a black mask and I'll add a fill layer under that and in the fill layer we'll go to anchor points and select chain mail and you'll see it kind of immediately comes in and does something uh, not what exactly what we want uh, and that's because it's referring to the base color so if i switch this over to the metallic um, it will be a far more um, you know certain a far more defined map but it's the wrong way around so we just need to add an invert to this so if I add filter and in my filter list uh, I can select invert that will invert that map and lay our chain mail over the top of our dress okay there's probably a few other things I need to do here because I think the my metallic information is being overwritten uh, by something above it uh, this fill layer here for example uh, isn't helping me I think so let's go to the metallic channel yeah some is overwriting it somewhere uh, I shan't fix that in this <laughs> because yeah we'll be here all day basically uh, not all day but you know I'll extend the video so long you'll get bored and uh, probably stop watching okay so that's added our chain mail into uh, an existing document or an existing thing but of course if you add something that is like a t-shirt kind of shape uh, or a vest kind of shape you know you can just add it in and it would be a you know a transparent chain mail shirt okay so I hope you found that useful um, I'm just going to go over to the preview render here um, if you have any questions please put them in the um, list below or the the comments below um, and I hope to talk to you soon